Hey guys, today is Sunday, October 18th. It is 4.57 p.m. and the temperature is 13 degrees Celsius. I'm here in Queen Broadview Village, located in the city's South Riverdale area. And the plan for this walk is to head east along Queen Street for a few blocks where I will find my way over to Degrassi Street and then I'll turn north and head along the entire length of Degrassi Street to where it ends at Gerard Street. It's kind of a muggy overcast day but it's not too cool. There's a look at the Opera House across the street. There probably won't be any concerts there anytime soon. And just to the east of here, which is straight ahead, is the Leslieville neighborhood. And then just past that, you'll find yourself in the beaches. I've had a few requests to do a walk down to Grassy Street on live streams and in the comments, so I thought I might as well get that one over with and come check it out. And Degrassi Street itself should be just up ahead. All right, I think it should be just one more block to the east of here. Although this sign is luring me in here, booze to go. I am freshly out at home. And with tomorrow being a Monday, the local LCBO will not be open. And just after these railway uh, tracks here, the Leslieville neighborhood begins, but I'll be turning left onto Degrassi Street, which is right here. And hopefully we'll be able to take in some of those pretty fall colors along the way on this walk. And I am now heading north on Degrassi Street, which should be mostly a residential street. This is perhaps best known for being where the Canadian television series The Kids of Degrassi Street was set. They filmed some of the show on this street itself, and a lot of the characters were based around the street. They also filmed somewhat extensively in the Queen Street East neighborhood and through Leslieville. And there's certainly a lot of really beautiful old homes here. I think a lot of these date back to the late 1800s. They're quite well preserved and well kept.
the kids of Degrassi Street TV show ran from 1979 to sometime in the mid 1980s, I think 1986. It was originally a series of after school specials that eventually grew into being its own TV series. Here's a small little park on the street. And later it spawned Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High. And a number of actors from the kids of Degrassi Street went on to play different roles in those two series. I think Degrassi Junior High ran from 1987 for a couple of years and then it morphed into Degrassi High as the kids got older and that ran for a few years. And I think the series ended in 1991. And the next Degrassi series after that, I think it was The Next Generation, was the one that Drake was in. Admittedly, I never watched them past Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High. And there's currently another Degrassi series, which you can find on Netflix. I think it's called The Next Generation. Or sorry, Next Class. I'm not really up on my Degrassi info. Certainly a beautiful street though. And I do remember watching the original series as a kid. In fact, in my elementary school, I remember in grade five, they would often wheel in the TV and play some episodes. I don't know if that was part of the curriculum or not, but that seems to be where my strongest memories of the show come from. And one of the characters on that show, Neil Hope, later went on to play a character called Wheels on Degrassi Junior High. Frequented an arcade and a bowling alley in Long Branch, which is in Etobicoke on the city's west end. I remember seeing him, there, him in there quite a bit. He used to play John Elway's quarterback and Blades of Steel and the Terminator 2 arcade pinball machine. Sadly, I think I heard that he had uh, passed away in 2007. And it looks like there's a Another parquet. Right, there's a school. I'm not sure if that was actually featured in the show. I think the schools itself were just kind of fictional. One of the shows or schools that was featured in the Degrassi High series is actually out in Etobicoke. And this is the Degrassi Street Park. Some beautiful colors on these trees. If I can recall, the TV series was created by a lady named Linda Schuyer, I want to say. She was actually formerly a high school teacher who started her own production company and kind of took that experience in to the TV show that she had created. All right, this is Dundas Street East. Degrassi Street continues along the other side there, but we don't have a marked crossing, so I'll have to be careful. Make sure there's no cars or bikes coming at me.
I did find a few of the original episodes on YouTube. I couldn't seem to locate them to download just before I came out, but I'm sure they're somewhere to be found if you're interested in them. I can't imagine the street has changed too much. And I think I picked a good time of year to go for a walk down here. I remember seeing that the original TV series were broadcast in over a hundred different countries and translated into dozens of different languages, so it's probably one of the biggest Canadian exports as far as TV series go. Oh, here's a really cute small old house. I've been meaning to do a bicycle tour around different interesting homes in Toronto. And I think that one just might have made the list. I'll have to get some background info on it. So as I mentioned, this is in the Riverdale district. A few blocks to the north of here, where Degrassi Street ends, is the East Chinatown neighborhood. I did a bike ride yesterday that passed through here. I don't think this property was around when they filmed the TV show. Coming this fall for sale. There's no way one of those units doesn't cost a pretty penny. Here's the back side of a school. Its name is escaping me, but I'll walk around to the other side. This entire street is something like only 750 meters in length, so at less than a kilometer, it doesn't take much time to stroll down the entire length. And I hadn't really planned anything else once I go past the grassy street. Maybe I'll just head north up some more of these side streets. Just to take in a bit more of this neighborhood. There's the 506, what would normally be a streetcar, but Temporarily, it's a bus. And that school is the Eastdale Collegiate Institute. There's a look west, down Gerard Street. Maybe what I'll do is I will head north up the next street here. 
and we'll check out some more residential streets. And then I'll carry on over to Riverdale Park and I'll end things there. It's one of my favorite spots in the city. I have ended a few videos there before. Someone's doing some artwork down that street. And I guess we'll be able to check out some of the Halloween decorations. This is Howland Road. Halloween has not been canceled this year. Although I think people are being encouraged to hand out candy using things such as extended tongs and hockey sticks. Seems kind of weird to me. I think we should all just cancel it and promise the kids we'll have a good one next year. I guess the stores have already ordered all their candy. Well, I can't imagine too many kids are going to be out trick-or-treating. Okay, and I have walked down this street before. Remember going by this Metropolitan Community Church? Just one of those little public take a book, leave a book, sharing libraries there. This is Victor Avenue. It's a lot of nice looking tree lined residential streets around here. So if I turn left here, this should take me right to the nice part of Riverdale Park East where we'll get that Fantastic skyline view. So this is Langley Avenue. This squirrel seems a little suspicious of what I'm doing. I'm sure it's used to people just walking right by it. And because the weather is a little nicer than I was expecting. I did bring my gear to live stream, so maybe I'll do a stream once I get to Riverdale Park. I wanna walk on the north side of the street here as there's less cars, but also I'm trying to 
not walk directly past any pedestrians since there's plenty of room to avoid them. If you like this sort of walk, let me know in the comments below and I can get a few more of these in during the fall season. Normally I tend to stick to more urban areas. They often just pass through these residential streets on live streams. I'll also have to remember to wear my other shoes that aren't as loud as these ones. <laughs> I can clearly hear my footsteps, so I'm sure the microphone is picking those up. A lot of people having fun with their uh, setups this year. Someone tipped me off on a rather spectacular Halloween setup not too far from where I live in Midtown, so I think that might be worth capturing in a video. If anyone knows of any other great Halloween displays in the city, let me know. And perhaps I can swing by them on a walk or a bike ride. That might make an interesting compilation video as well. If I just spent today going around. That's kind of nice. That covered stairwell. This house reminds me a lot of the house that the Madison Pub is in on Madison Avenue in the Annex. Kind of a big old Victorian style mansion. That thing is probably chopped up into a number of units. And look at this thing. Wow. Someone went all out when they built this. I would guess 1880 or so. Certainly the homes here give the ones in Cabbage Town a run for the money. There's a nice PSA for all the U.S. residents. And just across the street is Riverdale Park East. And this is Broadview Avenue. Well, I thought that cat statue up there it was a real cat.
I saw that guy's eyes <laughs> darting down at the camera. All right, so maybe I'll find a bench with a view. This would probably be a pretty nice date spot. Looks like maybe they're building some kind of access road to get down into the park. So this is Riverdale Park East and just on the other side of the Don River is Riverdale Park West. I'm not quite far enough along to get a view of that famous skyline, but in a minute or two, I shall be there. People always talk good things about this cafe. But I'm guessing it might be hard to get one of these benches. I know if you come and sit in one of these benches at night, you'll see people coming pretty much all night long, parking their car right here. They'll hop out and stare at the skyline for a few minutes and snap a few pictures, and then jump back into their car and take off. It's the financial district off in the distance. And it doesn't look like any of these benches are available. Not surprisingly, I was going to sit down and set up for the stream. Maybe I'll head down to that picnic bench at the bottom. If I start running, this could be a video for the Johnny Stumbles channel. I remember being a kid and my brother challenged me to a race down a hill and I didn't know any better. And he said go. And I think it took me all of three or four steps before I started tumbling. So that was kind of cruel of him. I guess that's the type of thing older brothers do. And that's still a spectacular view, even from the bottom of the hill. Well, I hope you enjoyed this walk up to Grassy Street and through part of the Riverdale District. There are links to my Patreon and Instagram in the description, as well as my other channel, Johnny Stumbles. Don't forget to go there and subscribe. And you can also check out the YouTube channel membership information, which is available on my main page if you'd like to support the channel. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.